hello i'm live again and um i'm using this super mild filter i really like it because it just makes me look like i have a tiny bit of makeup on which is amazing um i just want to say um during hey Samara, it's lovely to see you here um <laughs> it's kind of funny that you ran it i know you might leave in a minute but it's funny that you came on because like i literally came on to share one of my songs like a little bit um and it's great when there's no one there because i just like i'm like woo, no one's here um but yeah um so a few things that i want to do talk about is that i've noticed through this lockdown for the first time in um a long while like I go through my phases where I feel like I look like shit I'm sure everyone feels that at some time um but I've noticed through this year I kind of went through a phase of like feeling really good and feeling looking really good and I say looking really good because I don't wear makeup in general um I'm not someone that like overly mothers my looks in in a kind of yeah I just you know I'm just like if I feel good and I look good I look good and if I feel like crap and I don't look good I don't look good and I suppose that makes me feel good and <laughs> hello and um, that makes me kind of yeah it's like a reflection for me to be like yeah I feel good and I look good so that means I'm good there's something about that in my brain but when I feel good sometimes and then I don't look good Mm, that's really interesting for me because then it means I'm like not nourishing myself properly with good food but maybe other parts are okay with me but I'm not noticing and then therefore it'll affect me eventually in, in a while so for me food has always been a thing that I need to really manage well um it's I'm going to talk about that a different time because it's not why I wanted to come on but um yeah being nutritionally nourished as a woman is full-time job as a busy woman, as a busy woman. Um, but anyway, I wanted to come on here because um, I just came off a kirtan, which is lovely because I haven't heard kirtan, haven't heard, I haven't been involved in a kirtan in Ireland in years. Like, I don't know, like maybe 10 years or something, quite long, like maybe six years. It's That's actually a lie. I've been in kirtan... A few, every year actually I actually realized I'm in Kirtan every year at Earth Song but there's not a lot of Kirtan here in Cork so um yeah there's not enough and um yeah and for me what's been coming up a lot is my voice work and um my using my voice and I use that in my healing work I use that on stage I use it in my like as singing work I use it in my performance work uh, it, it really is in, in a lot of different areas of my work but I'm not using it enough and it kind of there's like a huge frustration around I should be using it and I should be doing this and I should and I should and I should but then I'm also backlogged busy with loads of other projects that's going on so the music always becomes like this thing down the end for something I think this like filter has like airbrushed my nose. It's really interesting. I I just look like a super model. This is how I look when I feel really good. Anyway, so um, yes, and I so I have this song, and we recorded in Malta. Okay, um, me and Lucas were in Malta, and he actually brought me there for my birthday, and um. It was great. It's a really magical place. And then um, we said that we would do music, record an album there because it's really hard for us. to. We're in a band together. Really hard for us to tie up our time together. I'm either too busy or he's too busy or we're not in the mood because we're tired because we've been too busy or whatever it is. Right. It's the joys of trying to make music um, if it's not your full time thing and we would love it to be our full-time thing definitely like you know if we had a choice that would be our thing it would probably be travel the world with our art 
artwork. Um, but that's a little bit more complex. So um, we recorded a few songs there and yeah, I'm not going to talk about what happened. <laughs> I'm not going to be talking about what happened. But what did happen is at one point I was like, look, I'm just doing a solo here. OK, because I always do a solo anyway. And this is what came out and I really, really loved it. But we never released any of those songs. We still haven't redone, redid, redone those songs. And then this one, um, I've been considering to release it as it is and then redo the song again and release it. So you're probably wondering why I'm like talking about my songs here in my medicine work. And it's like because I'm going through this thing in my life where I'm quite conflicted because like my singing work is fully my work you know but not everyone comes to me I use it in all my healing work but not all of my healing work because it depends on who's coming to me and why they're coming to me and it's a bit more complex but, but it's uh, it's coming so strong like, like that that's a thing that's the thing that I really want to be bringing um to be bringing and to be making money from that thing I'm bringing so being on stage as a musical performer is beautiful but it's not really a financial sustainable life so uh, my focus is on my work at the moment so i know we can all be online maybe doing some music gigs and stuff but actually that's a lot of time and effort that i haven't invested in at the moment um so i'm kind of procrastinating here because i want to share you the song hello barry um, so we're going to listen to it. So there's some little sound things that shouldn't be there. So, well, they're actually okay. You might not. Oh my God, I'm getting all shy. It's very cute. So I'm going to play it to you and I'm going to try and sing it with you. But it's actually, it's really cute because if I'm on stage, I'm totally fine. But then if I'm on a live, I'm like, oh my God, I'm on a live. And it's like really embarrassing and stuff. So it's really cute. Okay. I don't really know where I'm going to start it off, but we're just going to rock it on from there. Oh, wait now, wait now, wait now, wait now. Something's missing, something's missing here. Oh, that's really weird. Oh, I think my speaker's after going off. Oh my God, there's lots of people on now. This is actually getting scary. This is like the one time you don't want anyone on your live and then there's people joining. Damn it. Sorry, my speaker turned off. It's like one of these super amazing power Sony speakers. And yeah. Okay, this should work. Okay, so I'm not going to play any more of the song, but that is the song um, that I've been considering releasing and we have loads of songs that we need to release. Um, it's super healing. Like when I listen to it myself, I hate sacred healing. Um, when I listen to my own, when I listen to my own songs and they make me go, oh my God, that's so fucking good. Then I know that that's so so good because often there's a lot of our music that is really good but it's like yeah okay like you know whatever I like it but like it's not like making me like go oh my god but this song when I listen to it I'm like who's that singing <laughs> and I really like I really feel it to my core because I know what happened when I was singing that song therefore I know it wasn't me so that's why I do it late it's so cool so super lovely and powerful because I'm channeling in those moments so um yeah that's the song that's a little bit of the song and um I suppose my singing is part of my medicine work and in every session or in my programs or in my many of my workshops I have a lot of um singing in there or voice work I have yeah I have run like voice work just voice work workshops 
and then just sound healing workshops which have my voice in it and then I would have like one-to-ones that would be used my voice as well um but then um on the level of being on stage something else it's like something else because it's more universal what's happening so there's my little shyness um it's been really interesting this lockdown i have really i've not been like a, i'm a dancer all the time i'm all the time dancer but during this covid year something just like slowed me down and moved me i i kept kind of dancing and i kept i i am kept dancing but my hair is bugging me it's got so many bits um it's like the bedhead you know when you're like just living a life that you don't see people anymore so you've got bedhead going on in town and um but then what started happening is i started to kind of dissolve layers of myself and those layers um really i suppose yeah is my music layer that I just haven't been giving enough time to and it keeps coming up for me that like you know Masha you should be doing this more <laughs> um so yeah I suppose that's where I'm at and I want to share that because that's quite vulnerable not I wouldn't say vulnerable because I'm not like feeling raw sharing it to you but for me it's vulnerable because I, I it's like a place where I'm quite you know feeling triggered and yeah yeah having just like yeah it's not even it's not even about me actually it's not even about me because what happens is it's like like knocking on the fucking door and it's like why aren't you doing this why aren't you doing this I'm like i'm busy i'm busy doing other things um and yeah i have this podcast called um a way to the sacred and um that's another thing that i've been too busy to really put there and this is a, a conversation about like a way to the sacred is you know the sacred starts taking you away as much as like you're you know you, you go towards the sacred and the divine but actually on another hand it takes you it pushes you you know starts driving you once you're so tapped in oh man you're just my mirror. That's what's wrong. Is I don't look in the mirror in all these days. Um. Okay, so I'm gonna leave it with that. I'm gonna leave it with my hair because it's actually just part of like what's going on for me. So I have all these massive threads, as you know. Lots of threads. The dress are all the way down to my butt, just so you know. Yeah. Um. And I have realized that it's somehow a time for the hair to change and I have and that's been going on for quite a while and I have been struggling with how to change my hair because I also very attached to it and it means a lot to me um so yeah it's kind of interesting because it's like about this music about my artwork about my medicine work you know there's there's a lot I'm in just this like really yeah unfurling you know, snaking, un, unsnaking this and uh, shedding lair and um, yeah, and it's hard. It's hard to shed that lair um, and you're going to hear a lot more about that lair in, in the next few months or something. Um, it's a quite fascinating story that I will share worldwide one day. Um, but yeah, mm. so that's my song and uh, maybe I should play like another second of it because it's so nice. I, I think it's really nice, I don't know. Thanks for those people that came to hello to me and be really cute and uncomfortable. Um, yeah, so excited. There's something happening, something magical, something blending, 
And when you hear this, you can be like, Match, I love that song. And it might make me, encourage me to like release it as it is because the artist is always like being in this perfectionism of like, oh, I could record that again and oh, I could do this and I could do that. And that's probably why I don't really have a lot of my music out there and available to you all because yeah kind of a perfectionist kind of in like a weird way so big hugs and loves tea I kind of tend to look at my like towards myself because like it's the only person I'm here and I should probably look at G up there but I don't really want to because it's kind of harder but anyway big hugs bye bye bye